This is the XFL. What's up, everybody? This is Thomas with XFL Extra Point. And today, we're going to do something a little different than our normal scheduled show. It's going to be called Extra Point Extra, where we talk about topics that either couldn't make the last show or couldn't wait till the next show. So I'm doing the intro on these, and I am here with mm-hmm. Justin. Justin, say something so they know that you are alive. I'm going to sue you for gimmick infringement. That's right. This is your bit, and I'm totally biting it, <laughs> and that's okay, because that's how this business works. So today, we have a very special interview brought to us by our friend and friend of the show, Reagan, at XFL Down Under. Uh, he interviewed... Uh, former NFL player and current LA Wildcats LB, Tawan Jones, and was awesome enough to let us know and kind of let us release it through our platform uh, so we can kind of facilitate him getting a little exposure and helping us out with something to do. So thank you, Reagan at XFL Down Under. That's at XFL Down Under on Twitter. Make sure y'all hit him up with a follow. Uh, y'all can always follow us at XFL Extra Point on Twitter. But anyways, let's get to the interview. Hey, Taiwan. How you doing, mate? Okay, how you doing, mate? Really well, really well. Um, it is Regan from XFL Down Under, by the way. Uh, not just some crazy Australian calling you. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Excellent, excellent. Is it, is it Taiwan or Taiwan? Like, uh, Taiwan. Taiwan. Yep, yep. Excellent. I was really confused because I've, I've listened to a few commentators and they've all said different things, so I'm like... Not too right. sure. I'm <laughs> just asking. Um, so um, I'll just get straight into it for you there, mate, because um, it is uh, okay. it's two thirty a.m. here. So <laughs> my wife no, was you. like, "What are you doing, getting out of bed?" Um, so uh, tell tell us a bit about yourself, there, Tawan. Um, you know, Tawan Jones. I um, played football at uh, Michigan State University all four years. Uh, after leaving Michigan State, I went to um, the New York Jets for, you know, two and a half years. Uh, played there and then, um, you know, got released. Had a couple workouts, nothing really stuck. Um, but, uh, you know, kept the dream alive. Uh, continued to, you know, train, continued to work out. Then I actually signed with the AAF and I want to say it was March midseason. And the day after I signed, that's when they put the plug on the league. So... <laughs> I, I, I did. I did read that. That would have been absolutely rough. Man, it was it was terrible because I just got out there, flew out there, had to fly my own stuff out there, and had to fly my own, you know, fly my own stuff back home, you know, after just you know calling my parents that the day before, telling them I was signed, and you know they were excited for me. But um, but you know, so then I, you know, just kind of you know tried to keep his name alive. His XFL was coming up. Got ready for the um, the showcase, and uh, you know performed well there, and you know got the opportunity to hear my name called, you know, when the XFL draft happened in October 16th. Yeah, yep, not too long ago. Well, I, I don't know how you kind of did it, because um, I, I did do a bit of a um, binge session on all the information about yourself the other night. Um, how, do, how does being signed, released, signed, released, all that sort of stuff by the Jets, how does that sort of play on your mind as a professional player? Uh, I mean, it, it, it's tough because, you know, we you know, grow up, you know, people tell us how good you are at football, you know, you're going to make it to the league and make it to, you know, college. And, you know, so once all that stuff kind of happens, it kind of, you kind of get discouraged and, you know, kind of doubts your ability a little bit. But then um, at the same time, it kind of takes the fun out of the game, you know, because, it, you know, so much like it's a job now, you know, it's not like, you know, college, even in college, you guarantee, you know, four years. Yeah. You know, whether you, whether you play or not, you guarantee four years. But then at the next level, it's just kind of, um, you know, it's every, you know, pretty much you like a business, like any other job, like you're not guaranteed to be there to the, at the end of the day. So that was the, you know, the toughest part. But, um, you know, it was mostly like a, a mental type of, um, you know, mental type of um, thing more than, you know, anything else. When, when it is the, I guess, the same team that is like mm-hmm. signing and releasing yourself, do you feel, uh, I guess, a bit bitter when they do call you back? Uh, you know, not not when they you know call you back because I mean, at the same time, like I said, I know it's a business, so you know you had needs. Uh, you know you, you might need uh two offensive linemen because three went down the week, the, you know that week. So you know, I mean, it's kind of it's understandable, but you know after a while, it's just kind of frustrating and discouraging, you know, to say the least, because you have to keep delivering bad news to your family and friends and people who care about you, which you know those are people you don't want to let down. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, wow, that sounds sounds like you're going to be pretty mentally tough for that, actually. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A lot of guys who go through like those tough times and kind of kind of seems like they're losing their minds. And because a lot of guys don't have a backup plan after sports, because we're all we're all programmed to think that for, you know after football, you know we're going to make a million dollars in football. You know, growing up, and then you know once you get to college, then that's when you start to realize, okay, I need a backup plan. But some guys don't have that backup plan, so it's just kind of tough for them to transition from football to you know another job or like or anything like that well going off that actually leads straight into my next question that's a pretty good segue um how, how did you stay sort of football ready for um i mean sort of sort of the af but more so the xfl between that gap of the jets and um the wildcats giving you that call um i mean i just kind of like you know it was like one of those like uh just working out with hoping for you know hoping for some kind of like you know, let me just stay in shape just in case. I know what they're saying, what they, they say, uh, they ready so you don't have to get ready. So it was kind of like my mindset because I knew, like, I had the ability to play. I knew they had these leagues coming up. I knew that the, ex, the NFL door was kind of, like, shut because I hadn't been in there for a year and a half and haven't got, you know, I had a whole bunch of, like, agent situations where I had to get rid of, like, three of them in, like, three months. So it was just kind of, it, it was just kind of like they ready to get ready and then, you know, uh, you know, just kind of just try to keep our hope alive, you know, and listen to, you know, people who believed in me, telling me not to give up, because at times, there was times where, I, you know, I did want to give up and just move on with my life, but looking back at it now and just thinking, like, if I would have did that, then I wouldn't have been in this opportunity and situation I am now. Yep. D- did you have a backup plan, or was it always just football um, and get back to football? I mean, yeah, my main thing was, like, football, using football as, like, a platform to, like, build or something, so I know, like, me... I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, like, either, you know, open up a gym and start something for kids with special needs or, like, a foundation for kids in the inner city who um, want to, to, just to show them that there's more out there than just sports and entertainment. And if you want to be an artist, there's schools you can go to be an art. You don't have to go to a major university. If you want to be, you know, I don't know, whatever your craziest dream is, then, you know, there's, there's you know, schools for that. So that was kind of, like, my backup plan. But at the same time, I knew that playing football would help because it's a, I wouldn't have, you know, I would have to pay more money to fund these types of things up front instead of having to depend on somebody else to help me out with, you know, starting it up. Absolutely. Well, um, I mean, for for that sort of, I mean, back up golf yourself, which actually sounds well, that should be a pretty big goal for yourself once you do retire. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, what well, what was your reaction from getting like getting a call from the Wildcats? Because you went yeah, undrafted, I'm pretty sure, in the NFL. Yeah, I did. So I was just, you know, it was just, it was just a, you know, get a get a call and being your name in the background and say we should let you instead of getting a call at the end of the draft saying we want to bring you in um, as an undrafted free agent. See how you know everything goes. I guess. I guess it's a much greater feeling because, I mean, even as a, you just feel, you know, wanted. Like, as an undrafted free agent, it's like, okay, well, you know, we'll bring him in and see how, you know, see what he can do. But, like, now, it's like, when they call you, it's like, hey, we want this kid, you know what I'm saying? So, it's, uh, you know, it's a big, you know, I was excited that when I heard, when they called me. Yeah, uh, I suppose it's, it sounds, you sound less like a backup plan. That's kind of the feel like, I got from the person, um, but, I mean, I know you had to work your way up, like, any other, like, even if you drafted, like, you you got to work, but, you know, you get more, you, you know, it's, it's, it's more, like, they're more invested in you, I should say. Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, I've never been drafted, so uh, you, <laughs> I rely on you guys as players to tell me what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in that, you're, you're a linebacker, which I think is awesome that you've actually gone to the Wildcats, because uh, Winston Moss um, played pretty well in the NFL at linebacker as well. How, how do you think that's going to help you develop as a player? Uh, I mean, just be, yeah, his knowledge. You know, I mean, he, he's played in Super Bowls um, along with Pepper Johnson, who, you know, ironically was a coach over at the New York Jets when I was there and also was from Michigan as well. So, um, you know, all those guys, you know, both of those guys alone have, I uh, think, six Super Bowls, you know, six Super Bowl appearances or championships between the both of them. Um, so, I mean, they have the knowledge and know what it takes to get to the, the highest, you know, the highest the game of um, football. So I think just, you know, being with them and them teaching me and correcting anything I have to, anything that I need to, that needs to be corrected on my game, I think that's huge for me. And uh, and I'm really, you know, grateful to be to uh, be on there in the organization with them and uh, be no learn from them. Yeah, uh, I think that's one of the biggest things the XFL has done well is 
not only with the players they've brought in a lot of experience, but they've made sure that the office, the front office, the back office, yeah. that's fully stacked as well. So hopefully right. this league sticks around because I was pretty devastated when the AAF folded, <laughs> as as I'm sure you were as well, <laughs> one day in. Oh yeah, definitely <laughs> one day in. That was sixteen hours in. Oh, so not even twenty. Jeez. <laughs> Um, so who who would be your biggest supporter in in your life then? Uh, if, you know, family, you know, family and friends and people from the area who always you know supported me. Uh, I'm from an area where you know I'm the only one who went to play football um, in college, Division One, and um, professionally, and they had like a whole parade when I went up to college. So just the support <laughs> always been there and everything. So it was just in you know, my family, you know, they always believed in me. So. You know, I, that's, you know, it's, it's, you know they're, they're my why, you know, why I play the game. And they always have my back. And if I ever have anything, you know, going on, going on like if I have a bad practice or something, you know, I always lean, you know, lean on them for encouragement and, you know, positivity. So they would be, you know, I would say my parents and sister, they would be my biggest supporters. Oh, excellent. Well, absolutely. I mean, having the ups and downs of the NFL, I think it definitely is important as a player. I mean, you guys are human at the end of the day to have that support person. <laughs> so, um, yeah, at the moment, I mean, obviously training camp hasn't started yet to one, but w- what do you yourself think you bring to the Wildcats? Uh, physicality, uh, of course. Um, we just play in Michigan State. We play, you know, in the Big Ten. So, it, you know, that football is just as physical as it can be, uh, especially, you know, stopping a run. That, that's huge for me over, you know, the Cleveland, New York with the Jets. You know, I've been working on, you know, my, um, you know, pass, you know, my passing games, like pass dropping and just my knowledge of the game has gotten so much better in my IQ. So I think, you know, I bring all of that, bring a leader to the, you know, to the Wildcats and also, um, you know, just bring excitement because, um, you know, like I said, like I've been out of the game for a few years and I don't plan on, you know, being back out of the game unless, you know, it's on my terms. So, um, I'm going to, you know, bring energy, you know, bring, you know, because one of the main things in football, especially like nowadays is just to, you know, fan engagement so you know being able to um you know engage with the fans and you know having, having the fans like you not, not be a bad guy you know having, having the kids you know um, look up to you that's one of the main things so i think that's what i bring to you know the the wildcats excellent i haven't had an answer like that one yet so <laughs> i think i think you're a bit of a pro to the interview there as well to uh, <laughs> um now uh, this is going to probably be a hard question as well um, it's a, again, because training camp hasn't started, but in your mindset already, um, without even playing a single down of XFL football, but what what do you think it takes to be a Wildcat? Uh, I mean, with the coaches that we have, especially on the defensive side, I think it, goes, it, it takes, you know, um, physicality, accountability, and, um, you know, no, no one was supposed to do it. I, everybody on the defensive side, their offensive side is all you know, on the same page. There's no way we can lose. Like, if you look at, you know, just like the depth that we have, um, um, I know defense for sure because that's, you know, what I've been focusing on. Like, it's, like it is, there's no there's no reason where, you know, we, we shouldn't go out and, you know, compete every single game and, you know, be like this group of defense that, um, you know, that, you know, are trouble for uh, other teams. So I think as long as we, you know, know what we're doing, we're physical, and we're just out there having fun, and, you know, um, you just, you know, kind of like celebrating with each other, um, then I think, you know, that would that'd be huge for us. Excellent. Um, well, yeah, I think uh, going going off paper, going off what I know, I think the Wildcats probably have the best defense in the league, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Every game is different. Oh, yeah. yeah, everything, you know, looks good on paper, but, you know, we have to go out there and you know, execute as well, so. Uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to that and, you know, looking forward to playing with the guys that will be next to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and for yourself, to want, um after the XFL, um, football, what what's the goal, though, for yourself? Like, what do you want out of everything? Um, I mean, just, you know, like I said earlier, like I, right now, I run uh, sports camps for kids with special needs and like fitness camps, so that's huge to me because, you know, those, you know, those, those kids are, you know, my joy. I, I enjoy, like, going to work with them. They're hilarious. You know, they have no filter, which is what makes them hilarious. Um, <laughs> and they, uh, I'm Australian, man. I know all about no filter. <laughs> <laughs> they, they uh, you know, they, um, you know, and also, they, you know, they're, they're, like, some of my biggest supporters, too. Like, when they found out I got drafted, you know, they got me a cake 
wrote me letters um, and everything. So, you know, but they also want to make sure that I'll be back for next year's camp in July. So, uh, yep. <laughs> so that was, um, so, so working with them is always a great thing. And uh, so I'm going to start my own organization for that. And also, I want to, um, you know, like I said, start a little foundation for, you know, kids in the inner city who, you know, don't have the resources and who think that the only way to make it, you know, out of the inner city is through entertainment or sports when there's so many other avenues, you know, out there to for them to be a part of. So that's, you know, where I see myself after football. Excellent. Excellent. Not nice and humble. Um, and a bit of a, a personal question as well. Um, mm-hmm. in your opinion, what what has stopped you from still playing at that pro level and how will the XFL help you? Uh, I think what stopped me is, uh, I, I think I got complacent, you know, complacency stopped me. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't work as hard as I should have because, you know, I was there. So I was like, you know, I kind of got wrapped up with all that, but also, you know, I was young. So I got to college when I was 17. Um, so I was, I was super young and then I got to the, and I felt just turning 21. Um, so, you know, that's a lot, you know, making, making that money at 21, you know, it's a lot, you know, even, you know, different things that upset my parents, you know, um, you know, and those are my biggest supporters. Um, so I just, you know, kind of just uh, maturity-wise, I think I'm more mature now. Um, you know, I've been humble um, and just, you know, I know what it takes now. I know hard, what hard work it takes. Like my workout ethic, my work ethic now is a lot different than it was back then. And I haven't even been playing, you know, for, you know, almost two years. So it's just like, you know, I, I think that, you know, now that I got it all figured out and uh, I'm ready for, you know, the next journey, in, you know, in my life, whatever that is. So yeah, like it's a bit of a reality check, I guess. I mean, being being twenty one, straight out of college, earning all that money. <laughs> yeah, right, straight out of college, ready in college. You know, um, I mean, I don't know how college is over there, but I mean, over here it's like parties. You know, so everything is, you know, parties. You know, you go out, especially when you're winning. Like we were winning a lot at Michigan State, so it's like everybody wants to be hang out with us. Mm-hmm. And you go to the NFL, and there's more parties. Like you see the parties, like you see the stars and celebrities, and especially in New York City. Like you see them, you know, just walking down a block. So going out to a club and seeing them, you know, just you always want to be, a, you know, part of that. And that's where I got caught up. That's where I got caught up at. And you know, I regret it, you know, to this day. But I mean, it kind of it shaped me to be the man I am, you know, today, which you know, um, I'm happy to be. Excellent, excellent. Um, and uh, just my, my last question, mate. Uh, I like to keep these yeah. short and sweet. Don't want to keep you here for nine hours. Um, if if an NFL team called you right now, um, who do you want it to be? We've all got a favorite. The NFL team called me right now. Uh, I mean, right now, right now. Um, I mean, I, I mean, just from the past experience, I just didn't have any, you know, good experience with like the NFL team. So I like, I rather just stay with the NFL because I feel like this is more like guaranteed and more to help me work on my game because uh, right now uh, you know I want to get my film out there and I don't want to go in go to an NFL team and just like blind and you know don't have the time to you know like work on you know what I need to work on like there at that, at that level it's just you know you better come in and you know you got to come in and continue right away or you know there's really no use for you know right now you know being two years out you know I wouldn't even I wouldn't even you know take that right now just because I don't want to you know go in and you know make a bad name for myself when you know I can you know, with, you know, with, with the XFL, with the mini camp, with the training camp, and you know, get back into the groove. You know. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, going off that actually, because um, I haven't had anybody say what you just said. Um, one of the biggest controversies with the XFL is the difference in pays. I mean, right. as you as a player, I mean, do, and not playing for three years, do you really even, I guess, care about the money so much? Like, you just want more of a I mean, shot to play football, or is it you want to be yeah, paid yeah, for what wanna, you're worth? Right. Uh, I want to, I rather, uh, you know, I want to play football, but at the same time, you know, people do, you know, I understand, you know, the, the word of controversy is with money and everything, because, I mean, at the same time, people, I mean, I, I don't have kids, I don't have a family, like, I'm just, you know, myself, but some people have kids, families, and, you know, some people, also, you know, they have degrees where they can go and get jobs, and their degrees that they, you know, want money, but at the same time, you know, I mean, the money, you know, there's a there's potential to make, you know, a good amount of money. You got to win, you got to, you know, you got to be active, um, you know, and at the same time, uh, you know, I think people, you know, keep forgetting that this is only for, you know, what, four months? You're making this money only in four months. If you don't get a job after this, you know, I feel like, you know, you're even building more of a resume for people to want you, you know, wherever you are, because they're like, oh, I got this, you know, I got some athlete or professional athlete that, 
you know, work, playing football here, and, and then you know, kind of wants to come over here, and, you know, you know, work with us. So I think it's you know, so many different opportunities, you know, out there. But I understand where the money is. But for me, I just, you know, I, I just want to play, man. I, you know, I'm tired of sitting at home. I want to be in the locker room, you know, run out of tunnels, you know, practice, you know. Just, I don't know. I just, I just, you know, stuff that, you know, I'm, I grew up, you know, wanting to do, so. Do you think having the things like the little incentives as well makes you guys work harder as players as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, everybody, like you said, everybody, so if that's the case, the money would be an issue. So, mm. I mean, it makes you play harder. I mean, there's no different than you, you know, playing one of your buddies in one-on-one for 100 out. You want to, you know, you want that 100 out, so you can <laughs> play hard, as hard as you can, so it kind of just makes you know, everybody, um, it makes everybody want to, you know, play harder and get those just kind of be active every week, you know, play the final game, because I can't remember, but I think it was a, uh, what was the XFL when it came out a couple of years ago, it was like the championship game, it was called like the million dollar game, and like, and uh, I think like players got paid, you know, like a bigger, you know, bigger bonus, and you know, with this, and they did like, just for like a regular game, so I mean, that's, you know, who doesn't want to go there and make, you know, play all season, win every game, and you know, thank you for that, you know, situation, and you know, you make even more money. So I think it's it's it's, it's huge the the incentives that they have going in it. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks for that, by the way, uh, Swan. Um, this is uh, this is probably going to be one of the best interviews I've ever had. Um, you've done all the work for me. <laughs> um, well, that, that's that's it from me. Um, I haven't okay. got too much to ask you. You literally answered everything I wanted to ask. <laughs> Um, no, thanks so much. Thanks so much for uh, letting me interview you again. No problem, man. Thank you for having me. All right. So again, thanks to Reagan at XFL Down Under for letting us have that interview on our show. Uh, again, you can follow him on Twitter at XFL Down Under, uh, or you can follow us at XFL Extra Point. Uh, we have a show every Monday, uh, regardless of how much stuff is happening in the league at that point. We will have a show every Monday. So we will announce show drops on that page, and you can keep in touch with us through there. Uh, send us a DM. You might get on the show. Make sure you guys follow us because these these extra point extras could be happening at like any time, any any day of the week. Mm-hmm. So make sure you guys are following us because these might just be coming out of the blue yeah. mm-hmm. when either either Reagan comes back with some more good content or anything else you know that we just happen to need to talk about at that moment. So you never know, man. Yeah, thank you guys. You so never much. know. So, uh, again, thanks again for listening. Uh, thanks again to Reagan at XFL Down Under. And thank you. we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.